Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we're going to be creating this paint splatter effect with a fluid simulation and dynamic paint. This video is part of a new tutorial series which I'm covering the four surface types of dynamic paint, starting obviously with the paint surface. So what is the paint surface type? Well basically you can use one object as your brush and then you can use another object as your canvas and then use the brush to paint any color that you want on your canvas object. After you've set up the initial paint, you can then add effects to your paint such as spread which gradually spreads the paint all over your object, drip which allows the paint to react to gravity, force fields and such, and then shrink is basically the opposite of spread, it just slowly shrinks back the paint. On top of that, there is also a drying effect which basically adds a trail behind your paint which slowly becomes more and more transparent as the paint quote unquote dries. Finally, there are two ways to apply paint to your object, that being the vertex mode, which allows you to use the geometry on your object to paint on the individual vertices, or image sequence, which allows you to export all of the paint data as an image sequence, which you can then plug into the material. Unlike the vertex method, the image sequence does not require your mesh to have a lot of geometry for it to look good. All you need to do is just set the resolution here and then bake it out. Now that we have an understanding of what the paint surface type is, let's jump into this tutorial. All right, so here we are in a brand new scene in Blender. And the first thing that we're gonna do is to, of course delete the default cube. So you can do that by hitting X and deleting it. From there, we're gonna add in our canvas and you can use any object that you want. If you can wanna use a model, you can, but for this demonstration, we're gonna be using a monkey head. What I'm gonna do next is press Control 2 to add in a subdivision surface modifier to smooth everything out. Then we can right click and shade it smooth. We'll drag it up so it's sitting on the grid floor. And next, we're gonna be adding in a background. So go ahead and add in a new cube object. We'll go into front view wireframe and just scale this cube up until you get the desired background size that you want. Next, I'm going to go into edit mode, select that top vertex and just delete it so we have this shape just like that. From here, what I like to do is bevel all of the corners to give it some nice smooth edges. So we can do that by going into the edge select mode, selecting all of these different edges and then just pressing control B to bevel and you can use the scroll wheel to add in some more uh, geometry just like that. There we go, we've now set up our scene and now let's create the fluid simulation. We're gonna be adding in a domain next, so go ahead and add in a new cube. Go into front view and scale this up to be about the size that you want. I'm gonna line it up. I'm gonna line it up with the edges of our background, so right about there is good. I'll go into top view, drag it down like that, and then just make sure that it lines up perfectly right about there. Next, we need a flow object and you can use any object that you want. Again, I found that a cube actually looks pretty good. We're gonna scale this cube down and then just place it in the top left corner right around here or so. And this is gonna be the object that flies in the direction of our monkey head. Now that we've added all of the objects in our scene, let's press A to select everything and then Control A and we're going to apply the scale. So all of the numbers for the scale go back to one. This will make sure that everything works properly once we start simulating. Now let's create the domain settings. So go ahead, select your object. We're gonna jump over to the physics panel, click on fluid and change the type from none over to domain. For the domain type, we're gonna select liquid and then for the resolution divisions, let's go up to 128. Coming down here, we're gonna change the particle radius just a little bit. I've noticed with this simulation in particular that the fluid tends to grow in volume as the simulation plays. To prevent that, to make sure that the size of the cube is only the amount of fluid in the simulation, we're gonna set this a little bit lower to point, let's go with point eight and like seven or so. Somewhere around there will be pretty good. Next, we're gonna turn on fractional obstacles. And what that does is it just allows the fluid to hit the obstacle and just slide off it without getting stuck. Next up, we're gonna open up the mesh panel right here. We're gonna leave the up res factor at a value of two. And for the particle radius, let's go down to a value of one. This will give us some nice crisp looking fluid. Then we're gonna come down here. We're gonna set the end frame to 200. We're gonna change the type from replay over to all and then check is resumable just in case we want to stop the bake halfway through. With that done, let's select our cube object. This is gonna be our flow. Go ahead and select fluid, 
change the type to flow. For the flow type, let's select liquid. And the flow behavior we can leave as geometry because that's only, that's only the amount of fluid that I want to add to the scene. If you wanted to constantly add fluid, you could switch it over to inflow if you would like. To get it to actually move and hit the monkey head, we're gonna turn on initial velocity. And as for the X and Y values, let's go up to a value of eight for both of them. The higher you set this value, the faster the cube will fly and hit the monkey head. So if you want it to be really fast, you could go up to like 12 or something, and that's gonna really shoot the, shoot the cube over in this direction. I'm gonna leave it at a value of eight. As for the monkey head, go ahead and select it, turn on fluid, and this time we're gonna switch it over to effector. Make sure the effector type is set to collision, and then for the surface thickness, let's go up to 0.1. Go ahead and select your uh, background right here, turn on fluid, and change the type over to effector. Again, we're gonna set the surface thickness to 0.1. And that is basically all of the settings that we need to change for our fluid simulation. From here, we can go ahead and bake this in, select your domain, come down to the cache settings, make sure you save your project as well, and then click on bake all. While we wait for this bake to finish, let me tell you about a way that you can learn more about the fluid simulation, dynamic paint, or the six other simulations that Blender has to offer. And that is by checking out the second edition to my book, Learn Blender Simulations the Right Way. It is fully updated to Blender 4.2 and it covers every single setting in each simulation with examples on how it works. No joke, I've spent so many hours testing, creating screenshots to show exactly what each setting does. On top of that, there are nine different projects where we go step by step and learn how to use each simulation in a practical way. Some of those projects include a waterfall, an explosion, soft body obstacle course, and a wave effect. The second edition also includes a brand new chapter where we combine three different simulations together, those being the cloth, dynamic paint, and fire to create this burning up effect. And with the purchase of the book, you have access to every single blend file that is associated with this book. As of right now, until May 24th, the book is currently 22% off on Amazon. So now is the perfect time to pick it up. The link is in the description. And if you want to view the trailer for the book, which was made in Blender, by the way, you can click in the top right corner right now. With all that out of the way, let's get back to the tutorial. All right, the bake has finished and here is the result. If we scroll through here, you can see the fluid hits the monkey head and splatters all over the place, which looks pretty nice. You might notice that there is still a lot of fluid in the scene and it looks like the particle radius setting is still a little bit too high. So I'm guessing probably around 0.8 or 0.85 will work pretty well. But since it's already baked, I'm going to leave it as it is. From here, we're gonna set up the dynamic paint. The first thing that we need to do is create the canvas and that's gonna be this monkey head. So go ahead and select it, go over to the physics panel and select dynamic paint. We're gonna leave the type on canvas and then click on add canvas. From here, we're gonna change the vertex <coughs> From here, we're gonna change the format from vertex over to image sequence because we're gonna be exporting images and then importing it back in into the material. For the resolution, let's go up to 1024. The higher you go with this number, the better the image will look, but it's gonna take longer to bake. For the end frame, we're gonna match the end frame in our simulation, which is 200. And then for the sub steps, I'm gonna go all the way up to a value of 10. This will make sure that the simulation is accurate even when this fluid is moving very quickly. Next up, we're gonna come down here to the dry section, open this up, and we're gonna set the time to 200. This will allow us to, like mentioned earlier in the video, the drying effect is basically a mask which we can then have influence the glossiness of the material to make it look like it's actually drying. If you wanted to add some effect, you can add them here like spread, drip, or shrink. I'm gonna leave it off for now. If you wanted to, you could add some effects right here like the drip option, that might look pretty cool on the monkey head, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it as it is. For the output, go ahead and open up this panel. For the UV map, go ahead and select that UV map right here, and then set a directory of where you want your images to go to. I'm gonna create a new folder, and I'm gonna call it monkey head select it and then click accept. Make sure you export both the paint maps and the wet maps down here. And now as for the brush, that is going to be our fluid. So select it, scroll up to the top here and then click on dynamic paint. 
change the type from canvas over to brush, and then add in a new brush. For the paint color right here, we can just leave it at the default because we're gonna be changing what the paint looks like in the material later. So go ahead and just leave it as it is. For the source right here, we're gonna change it from mesh volume over to mesh volume plus proximity. If we come back here to right about here or so and zoom in, you're gonna notice there's gonna be a slight distance between where the mesh is and where the monkey head is. If this was set to mesh volume, sometimes it's not going to clip inside the monkey head and it's gonna look like there's no paint being on that, uh, on that spot. So changing it to proximity allows the proximity of the brush to actually influence where the paint is. The distance right here is the distance between the brush and where it's gonna be painted on. One is way too high. We're gonna go down to 0 0.04. and For the fall off, I don't really like to use smooth. I like to use constant for the scene so that any paint that's gonna be on our monkey right here is gonna have a harsh cutoff and there's not gonna be a smooth transition between where the paint is and where it's not. So setting it to constant will fix that. Next, we're gonna do the exact same thing for our background. So select it, hold shift and select the monkey head Control L and we're going to copy the modifiers of the monkey head. This will copy all of those exact settings right here, all of the dynamic paint, and then apply it to the background. It also added a subdivision surface modifier, which we don't need, so go ahead and delete that. With that done, we're ready to bake out the images. Select your monkey head and we'll bake this first and then we'll work on the background. Come down here to the output section, make sure you save your project as well because this does have a tendency to crash and then click on Bake Image Sequence. For the background image sequence, what we want to do is select it, come over to the Output tab, and create a new folder of where we want these images to go to. With the monkey head folder right here, it's going to overwrite the monkey head images. So we need to make sure that we set a new directory of where we want these images to go to. I've created a folder right here called Background. You can create a new one and then accept it right there. The other thing that we want to do before we bake this is we want to unwrap it. Since we changed the geometry on our cube and we deleted the vertex in this corner, we need to go into edit mode, select A to press A to select everything and go U and then smart UV project and then hit unwrap. The other important thing that we need to make sure is that the fluid is actually touching the background plane. If we go into front view and zoom in a little bit, you're going to see that there is a slight distance between the bottom of the background and where the fluid is. This can result in some paint not affecting where we want it to. To fix that, all you have to do is select it and just drag it up until it matches the height of the fluid. So right about there is good. On this right side, we're gonna drag it to the left. Right about there is good. And the reason it's disappearing is because this is part of the fluid simulation. But don't worry, since we already baked it, it's not going to affect it at all. Same thing on top view, we're gonna drag this along the Y axis until it reaches right about there is pretty good. From here, we're ready to bake it in, so make sure it's selected and then click on Bake Image Sequence. All of the images have been exported now, and now the next step is to separate the paint maps from the wet maps, because you can see here they're in the exact same folder. So what you wanna do is create a new folder right here. I've created four different folders, the background, the wet maps, monkey head, and then the monkey head wet maps. And what we need to do is open up this in a new tab. We're gonna create, we're gonna jump into this folder, come down to where the wet maps start, scroll all the way to the bottom, holding shift, and then select the bottom one right there. Then I'm just going to click and drag and place it in the wet maps. And then just repeat this step for the monkey head. Now we are ready for the material, so I'm gonna jump over to the shading workspace. With the background selected, I'm gonna come over here and press shift A. We're gonna add in an image texture click on open and then navigate to where those textures are. This one is for the background paint maps. Select everything and go open image. Then if we take the color, plug it into the base color of the principal shader and then turn on auto refresh, we should be able to see the paint splatter effect. Then to add in those wet maps, we're gonna press shift D on this uh, image sequence texture. Click on the folder icon, navigate to where the wet maps are. We'll press A to select everything and go open image. And to see what these look like, if we play our animation, you'll see that they're slowly starting to disappear over here as the paint dries. And that is looking pretty good. 
Now what we can do to control this, we're going to plug this into the roughness. I'm gonna press Shift A. We're gonna add in a converter color ramp to control this a bit better. We're gonna take the color, plug this into the roughness. And what we actually wanna do is for the paint to be the black color and then the, uh, the background here to be the white color. So with this color ramp, all we need to do is just flip the color ramp. And now when we restart and play the animation, you can see everything is black and then it slowly turns to that white color which is exactly what we want. As for the color, if you don't wanna use the blue color, what we can do is press Shift A, add in a new color, and then a mix RGB color, and we'll place that here. We're gonna take the alpha, plug this into the factor. We'll take a look at this with the principal shader. Now for the A and B colors, here is where you can change the background and the paint color separately. So for the, for the A option, this is going to be the background. So I'm just gonna leave it as a white color, and then for the B color, we can go with anything that we want. If you wanted a red, blue, pink, green, all that, you can change it here. And that looks pretty good. One thing I want to do though, is I wanna be able to change the paint color for all of the different objects, including the domain, which is the fluid right here, all at once without having to go through each one. And we can do this by creating a new group. We're gonna press Shift A, go over to Input, add in an RGB. We'll just select that color that we just created here. And then with this RGB color selected, I'm gonna press Control G to create a group. And now we can just call this paint color. From here, we'll take the paint color and plug it into the B option. Next, we'll select the monkey head. In the drop down menu, select the material 101. And we need to make sure we duplicate this material by hitting that two button. And now we can select the correct paint maps. So we'll go back here. We're gonna go with the monkey head a to select everything and go open image. Down here we'll do the exact same thing, click on the folder icon, go back to where the wet maps are, A to select everything and go open image. And now if we do the exact same thing with the domain, we'll create a new material for the domain, we'll set the roughness down to zero, and then we'll press shift A, add in a group, paint color, and then just plug it into the base. And there we go, we now have that paint color and again, if we open this up by hitting tab, we can change the color directly right here and it affects all of the different objects. And there we go. So now let's take a look at this by holding shift and then left arrow to restart the animation, hit the space bar to play it, and here is the result. That looks pretty nice. The other thing I'm gonna do is with the fluid selected, you can right click and shade it smooth so everything is nice and clean. For the render settings, let's go into the rendered view to see what our EV render looks like. We're gonna jump over to the render settings right here, turn on ray tracing. I'm gonna press Z and toggle overlay so all of those particles disappear. We're gonna open up the color management tab, set the look to high contrast. And then for the lighting, we can just add in an HDR and I'll put a link in the description of where you can get some really nice HDRs. Choose environment texture and then go open. The HDR I'm gonna be using for this tutorial is this Photo Studio. Go ahead and select it and go Open Image. And there we can see it in our scene. If you want to change the rotation, what you can do is go back over to the Shading Workspace, switch this from Object to World, and then we can add in an, an Input Texture Coordinate and then a Mapping Node as well, right here. Take the generated, plug it into the vector, the vector into the environment texture, and then for the Z rotation, all you have to do is change this and it'll change what the lighting looks like. So I might go with something like that so we get a nice shadow right in the corner. And that looks pretty good. We can also hide the cube from the view and from the render just like that. I'm gonna position my camera right about here and then press Control Alt Numpad Zero to snap the camera to place. Then you can select it, drag it back so you see the whole thing in frame and then position it right about there. And now we are ready to render out the animation. But there we go, that is how you create a paint splatter effect in Blender. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial and if you created something cool, make sure to send it to me on Instagram at BlenderMadeEasy. Again, if you wanna learn more about fluid simulations, dynamic paint, and all of the other simulations that Blender has to offer, make sure to check out the book that is linked in the description. It's currently on sale all the way up to May 24th, so make sure to grab it before that sale goes away.
That's going to do it, and I'll see you all in the next one when we're going to be using the Displace Surface Type.